you're either going to love me or hate me at the end of the message and that the line is going to be drawn in the law in the sand and in the spirit about whose side are you on you're either on god's side or you're on the devil's side there is not a third side and that the line is going to be evidently clear by true prophets and prophetic and teachers and evangelists and all the people who are really hearing from the lord will speak the direct truth that comes from the scriptures, not their own opinion, not my opinion, not what I think is right, not what I hope for, but what the word of God says. Every time I step into this pulpit, every time I grab a microphone and God has me sharing a message that he has put on my heart, I will be speaking things that he has revealed to me through his word. So what God is saying, and we're going to bring this scripture up that I brought it last time, that Jesus says himself, do you think I've come to bring peace on earth? No, I have come to divide people against each other. From now on, families will be split apart, two and three in favor of me, two against, two in favor, three against. The line is being drawn in the spirit, and it is happening all across the world, all across every single place in this country. And two sides, God is uh, separating the wheat and the tares, the sheep and the goats, all the things. And, and to be honest, there is going to be a divide that takes place in the church because there has been a gospel that is a false gospel. They're teaching a fake Jesus that go ahead and comes with man-made uh, ideas and twists and turns and manipulating scriptures to things that are not true. And God is raising up voices and ra raising up teachers and ministries to point out the truth in the scriptures because the people in the, in the pews and in the chairs have been lied to and manipulated and they haven't read their Bibles enough so they're able to get twisted into these false doctrines. So you are going to hear the truth when you come here on Saturday nights. You are going to hear the truth from people that are hearing in the spirit. And you're going to hear more bold messages because that is what God is calling his leaders to do. And I want to tell you that you are a bold leader. You don't have to have a microphone to be a bold leader. Let me tell you something. There should be no such thing as a silent Christian. That goes against everything the Bible teaches. You are supposed to be proclaiming the gospel, proclaiming the good news, proclaiming your testimony. We have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We point to the cross and how we were saved by the blood of Jesus and how we died on the cross. And we, he rose on the third day and that has washed away our sins and turned us into a new creation. And then you tell your story about what he did in your life. We cannot be silent. The time is too short, and it is now is the time to speak. Because people are broken and hurting and confused and lost. And they are lied and manipulated everywhere they look. By the government, by media, anywhere that they go in society. And even in the church! And God has said, no more of that! He is not tearing down the church. He's tearing down the religious spirit that have taken over the church. The church is you and me. That is the church, not a building. We are the church. There is going to be a civil war in the American church, but it is against the spirit of religion like I have been preaching, and I will continue to preach. Because that is what God is doing. So we're going to look at the scriptures here of what he is leading us into as we prepare. And I'm going to tell you right this, God, I have never said this in the three and a half years of preaching, but God is going to proclaim his truth that is being spoken through me by what takes place at the prayer time at the end. He is going to show his power to show what has been preached is truth. And to be honest with you, I did not want to just yell that. But he has made me. I'm sitting over there and he said, you know what I told you to say. You better stand up there and tell him. Because this message is what's on his heart. It's what's taking place in society and it has to be proclaimed. So here we go. Thank you, Jesus, so much for this time, Lord, and this word that you have given me, God. We know that you are the all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-seeing everything, Lord. And we know that you see us right here. And God, what we have come here to do is get to know you in a deeper way. We have come to become more intimate with you, to be led by you, to be cleansed by you. Lord, we want you to shine light on anything in our life that you need to remove out of our lives. God, we want to come to you as an open book. 
there's some struggles that maybe some of us have, Lord. We want to. We want you to help us with that. Even if there's things that we don't know that we're struggling with that we have blocked out, we want you to reveal that to us tonight. We want you to put us through the fire to burn out anything that is not of you. Because our heart is to be more like Christ. We pray and ask right now that you block out all distractions. That any assignment from the enemy of condemnation or shame or anger or rage that wants to try to pull people away from what is the truth that is going to be proclaimed here right now. We pray that you bind it and cast it out right now and that only your warring angels are the ones in this tent. Cheering on as your word is being proclaimed. Cheering on as the anointing as falling. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, there's only two sides, guys. There is only two sides. And what God has been, I've been doing a lot of praying and studying. And like I said, I, you know, repent, make America great again. My heart is breaking for our nation and the direction that we're going. And, and, and that there are so many people who are either don't have the boldness to stand up or have been deceived. And if they've been deceived, I pray right now that the light gets shed on the truth of what God is doing. And how you're able to tell that we may learn not to go beyond what is which is written. The truth of what we stand on, what we walk in, and what we claim as we go and share the gospel and the way that we live our life needs to line up with the scriptures. If you want to know if the Lord's really showing, if that's his truth, if it goes against what's written in the Bible, he didn't say that to you. We have to get more in, in tune with what the word of God says and go by the scriptures because the deception that is already taking place and is heightening and heightening and heightening and heightening and heightening. If you don't have discernment and understand the word of God for yourself, you will be deceived. You will be deceived. That's it. I don't care how smart you think you are. I don't care what, how, how, how much money you got or any sort of thing. If you are not rooted in the word of God in the last days, you will end up being deceived. And I will continue to preach that and preach that and preach that. So you start falling in love with reading your Bible. How long are you supposed to read your Bible until your Bible starts talking back? That's how long you're supposed to read your Bible. Amen. The Bible be talking back. And it's about to say a whole lot. So let's go. All right. So you, we're in Matthew chapter 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop. This is a very famous verse. It cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine for all to see. So that everyone will praise your heavenly father. We are the light, guys. Wherever you go. This is the team huddle. Then we go out and we share our light in the world. At our jobs. At our school. In our families. Wherever it is. You have to understand that God needs all the lights he can use right now. That when you go to work, it is probably very, very dark where you go. Even though, like I work at Texas Tony's. It's great, great people there. But you know what? They're lost, most of them. And when I go in there, I want to have an impact. And, but our lives have to match up with what the Word of God says, like we've been talking about the last few weeks. The, is the way that you live, does it reflect what the Scriptures say? Because talk is cheap. You can, see, you can talk a big game. You can know all the Scriptures. You can know all the songs and do all the things. But if you're doing secret things in the dark, it doesn't have... It doesn't speak truth to the people. And people have been lied and manipulated to enough that they can tell when someone's phony. And so many people think that religious people are just a bunch of hypocrites. Religious people are a bunch of hypocrites, but the body of Christ and true disciples of Jesus ain't. Because we walk what we know the Lord is leading us in. Do we make mistakes? Yes, but we continue, continue to walk. I'm telling you right now, God wants to lift you up in your life. He wants to use you right now. This is the moment. 
You understand that angels are up in heaven right now looking down, just stomping their feet, so excited with anticipation because they know the Father's preparing the biggest harvest that's ever taken place in human history. He's got them up there getting ready, preparing stuff because this big wave, this revival that's about to flow across the earth, which is already popping up from place to place to place. He's got angels doing all sorts of assignments up there and they just like, when are we doing it? When are we doing it? Because they don't know when the time and the place is going to take place. They just know what their father is preparing them to do. I'm telling you that there's angels all around this tent right now who are excited to see the fire fall in your life tonight. Come on. I'm telling you, we got we got to start stepping into this. Not just coming to services to, 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 to get goosebumps and feel the anointing for a second. I love it when God does that. But what those moments are supposed to do is to, to give you a hunger to dig into him more so he can lead you and use you. Understand that you are in a moment in this service right now that God has is, is, is brought you here to give you a new revelation of the greatness of the things he has planned for your life and the way powerful ways he wants to use you. And if you right now in your heart and in your mind as you are in this service, if you are all in and you press into the Lord about God, show me how you want to use me in a powerful way. He is going to reveal that to you tonight. He's going to give you direction in that tonight. He's going to put a fire inside of you to push you into going out in ways that you thought you never could. I never thought I could be a preacher. When I was in my addiction, I was scared to talk. To, I got nervous and anxiety going into the gas station buying my alcohol and not wanting to talk to even the gas attendant. I was terrified. I would talk to absolutely no one. I'm telling you, God can transform you into a crazy spiritual sniper wanting to go ahead and just kill demons everywhere you go. If you allow him to shape you and mold you. He's the potter, we're the clay, but you know what? The thing is, you've got to be willing to step up and get on the, get on the potter's wheel. Let him mold you a little bit. You've got to allow him to say, okay, you've got to shape me and mold me into what you want. It's, it's a little uncomfortable sometimes. But you have to allow him to put his hands on you and let him mold you and shape you. And I'm telling you, right now is the time he wants to do that. 